Audio is often considered the redheaded stepchild of DV filming. It's treated like a second class citizen, given little serious attention or just ignored altogether. If you have bad sound, you have a bad project because bad sound will overshadow everything else you did. I want you to listen to this, rewind it, then listen to it again. Your audio is more important than your video. Your audio is more important than your video. I'm gonna say that again and put titles on the screen in giant fonts just in case you missed it. Your audio is more important than your video, period. Now for a lot of people this might be a revelation, but allow me to show you what I mean. If you have a blurry video, a boom pole in the frame, a dirty lens, shaky amateur camera work, any type of video problem at all can be fixed in a number of ways. You can cut away to a close-up. You can cut to some B-roll of your subject matter. You can get experimental in post-production. Or guess what? You could just leave the video mistake as is. The audience will forgive a certain amount of visual mistakes as long as your content is strong and compelling. However, audio mistakes, audio mistakes, now that's a whole other story. Bad sound sabotages everything else, even compelling content. People can enjoy your compelling content if the sound is too awful to ignore. And if you have whack sound, you have a whack project. Allow me to demonstrate. When you make mistakes with audio, such as recording levels that are too low so that you can barely hear your subject's voice, you will have to crank up the levels when you edit. Now when you crank up the level of your subject's voice, you are also cranking up the level of the background noise. So there is a noticeable and annoying hiss in the audio that sounds a little like my voice does right now. Now on the flip side, if you record sound that is over-modulated or too loud, you're probably completely <laughs> because there's not really anything you can do to fix audio that was recorded over-modulated. Now, if you record sound that is too loud, you've just put your project on a one-way train to State Town. Audio that is over-modulated is distorted, rumbly, unintelligible, and generally makes your audience squirm in their seats. Now, you can tweak and turn down the level of that distorted and rumbly signal in post-production, but you will ultimately only end up with a softer, distorted sound. It will be equally distracting for anyone watching. Understand this, distorted audio is distorted audio and nothing and nobody can change it back to crisp, clean audio once it's been recorded that way. So for all those reasons, plus a bunch more I haven't even touched on, your audio is more important than your video and you need to get it right every time, all the time. So I'm going to give you some simple audio guidelines that you can apply when shooting with any camera, at any budget, or any time. I want you to write these rules down, carry them around in your pocket, sleep with them under your pillow, meditate on them, whatever you got to do to remember these things so that they become a regular habit every time you shoot. These are down and dirty DVs, five sound rules to live by. Check them out. Rule number one, get the mic as close as possible without getting in the shot. The most basic rule for recording dialogue is to get the mic as close to the action as possible without being in the scene. Now the closer the mic, the better the quality of the recording. This is why boom mics so often end up creeping into scenes in films the sound person was trying to get as close as possible and accidentally allowed the mic to enter the frame. Now you may have heard that you should avoid using the onboard camera microphones for recording dialogue. This isn't as much due to the sound quality of the camera mics as it is due to the simple fact that camera mics are in a bad position, a full 6 to 15 feet away from your subject's mouth. So the biggest problem with using camera mics is that they are too far from your subject to record the best sound that the mic is capable of. If you have a camera mic and it's detachable, Try removing it and using extra sound cable to place it closer to your subject. Otherwise, use another mic and get it as close as possible without getting in the shot. 
In the case of lav mics for documentary, it's perfectly normal to have them visible in the shot. So that is the most basic thing that you can do to improve the quality of your sound, regardless of whether you're shooting with a $500 camcorder or a $100,000 equipment package. The mic has to be as close as possible. That's rule number one, and it's the easiest thing you can do to improve the quality of your sound. Down and Dirty DV sound rule number two is always wear headphones. Always. There are a wide variety of things that can ruin your sound that can only be heard by monitoring your sound with headphones. Simply watching levels on a meter or relying on your naked ears will not reveal any of the following. A cable clunking against a boom pole. Air conditioner noise. Hum from a computer. A distant plane. A loose mic in a Zeppelin excessive traffic noise on and on and on. If you don't get into the habit of regularly wearing your headphones every time you record sound, you may find yourself stuck with a bunch of time-consuming or irreparable sound problems during editing. Now the good news is that all of the issues I just covered can be easily detected by simply wearing headphones. And not just any headphones, your MP3, player earbuds, your iPod, earphones, they ain't going to cut it for filmmaking. You need to get your hands on some professional over-the-ear or isolating headphones that shut out all of the other sound except what's in your headphones so that you can hear only the signal being recorded. I don't care if you're bald-headed in the wintertime or if you got an afro and it's a 90 degree summer day, you need to wear headphones every time you're recording audio. There's no down and dirty substitute for good headphones. They are a necessary investment and they're well worth the cost. So always wear headphones is rule number two. Sound rule number three, monitor the sound being recorded to camera. If using a mixer, you should monitor the sound actually being recorded by the camera as opposed to only listening to the sound coming from a mixer. Now this is a smart practice because the sound could go into and come out of a mixer as a perfect signal but still be ruined by bad levels or other settings that may have been inadvertently changed on your camera. Now many mixers have a switch to monitor sound from the camera. To use this feature, you will need to feed sound from your camera back to your mixer by plugging a cable from the camera's headphone jack into the mixer's monitor end jack. Remember, that's the signal that's being recorded to tape and that's what you're going to be editing. Now if you can't feed your signal back through the mixer, you may want to plug your headphones directly into the camera and keep a careful eye on the audio meters on the camera LCD as you mix. Also, if you are using a mixer, remember to match levels between the camera and the mixer. Once your levels are set, use the mixer input control to adjust your levels. The bottom line is to always listen to your sound at its final recording destination, regardless of whether you run it through a mixer or any other type of sound equipment. So that's rule number three. When using a mixer, monitor the sound from the camera. Now rule number four is scout your location for sound issues. It is vital that you carefully observe every location, whether you're shooting indoors or out, for any source of noise or sound problems that could interfere with your shooting. Never forget Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong, will go wrong, is always in full effect when it comes to location filmmaking. If you don't take sound into full consideration when choosing a location, you are personally inviting Murphy's Law to wreak havoc on your shoot. Not only do you want to scout the specific location, but you also want to try to scout it during the same time of day that you plan to shoot. Many locations will have very different soundscapes at different times of day. Now if your location is a second floor apartment over a night spot, it's going to sound a lot different at 11 a.m. Monday morning 
Then it's going to sound at 9 p.m. Thursday night when the punk rock band starts their first set. So how can you avoid such a catastrophe? Easy. Always think about your sound in addition to those beautiful images in your head. After you do that cool director framing up the shot thing with your hands, put your hands up and cup your ears and listen to your location before you commit to shooting there. So that's rule number four. Scout your location for sound. Rule number five, always record atmosphere or room tone. Recording atmosphere, room tone, or wild sound, wild track, whatever you want to call it, is simply recording the natural sound of any location. All the little buzzes and birds and traffic and background noises that often go unnoticed to our naked ears during production. Now the purpose of recording atmosphere track is to smooth out audio inconsistencies that come up in editing. This comes into play in two primary situations. Situation A, you need to do ADR or additional dialogue recording after a scene was already shot. The ambient sound under the dialogue that you record during your ADR session in the studio will not match the audio on the shot you recorded on location unless you lay in the ambient sound from location or the room tone. Now, in situation B, during dialogue recording on location, background noises that you have no control over or fail to notice, such as air conditioners or refrigerators are heard on one shot, but not heard on the next. It seems counterintuitive, but you'll need to actually add location background noises for any dialogue shot where it's missing in order for the shots to sound consistent when edited together in the same sequence. The procedure for recording room tone is simple. During a break or as soon as picture is wrapped, have everyone on location be silent and freeze where they are. That means no packing, no adjusting equipment, no nothing for at least one minute while the sound recorder captures the natural ambient sound of the location that will help save your butt in editing. So recording room tone or atmosphere is the fifth and final down and dirty DV sound rule to live by. So I'm going to recap everything. Here's the short version. Rule number one, get the mic as close as possible. Rule number two, always wear headphones. Always. Rule number three, when using a mixer, Monitor the sound being recorded to the camera as well. Rule number four, scout your location for sound issues. Rule number five, always record wild sound or room tone. That's it, y'all. Those are five very simple things that you can do to record better audio, no matter what your budget or your resources. Learn them, live them, love them. I'm Anthony Artis, the originator and creator of Down and Dirty DV, and I hope you enjoyed this special selection from my instructional guerrilla filmmaking DVD series. Down and Dirty DV is a new approach to film education for a new generation of DV filmmakers. Just like that clip you just saw, all of our instruction is illustrated, entertaining, straightforward, and most important, it's full of practical, real-world information and tips that you can immediately begin to apply to maximize your filmmaking resources on any budget, any camera, any time, just like the shirt says. Also at DownAndDirtyDV.com, you can find links to our blog, video podcasts, books. You can order these hot sweatshirts, other products. We got all kinds of stuff and more straight-up guerrilla instruction for filmmakers with limited resources. I thank you so much for listening. Till next time, this is Anthony Artis, a.k.a. the Don of Down and Dirty DV, that low-budget brother shooting undercover, the digital video pimp teaching you how to skimp, wishing you all peace, love, and video. I'm out, baby.